Hello guys, welcome back to Tech Cruise. Today we'll be doing an in-depth review on the all-new Makuta 8 Plus. Let's start with the specs on this scooter. This scooter has a 48 volt, 15.6 hour amp hour battery with two 600 watt motors. All right guys, let's start from the top of the scooter. On the left hand side, we're going down, we've got the horn, the dual motor button, and the indicators. Going to the middle, we've got the display screen that's the exact same as the Makuta 10 Plus. Going further down onto the right side of the handlebar, we've got the power on button, we've got the mode selector button, and we've got the mode changer button. And also, something completely new with the scooter, there's a twist throttle instead of a trigger throttle or a thumb throttle. Now we will fold the scooter up. Let's fold the handlebars first. I'm going to turn off the scooter, just like that. They go backwards, not forwards like the Makuta 10 Plus, but backwards. We got the folding stem. That's never been opened. We <laughs> clip that with the back. Just like so. Now you can lift it easily. I would also like to mention I did realize one thing if you do not fold the handlebars, the scooter will sway side to side as the handlebars keep it in place so it will start swaying like that. Alright guys, let's start about my first impressions after riding this scooter as yes, it took me a bit of while of getting more used to the scooter and see what the pros and cons of the scooter are. After riding this scooter, a couple of things I have found is that the display screen is the exact same as the older model, the Makuta 10 Plus. It is not as visible in the daytime, but it's nice and visible in the nighttime. At the beginning, I realized that the twist throttle is not very normal to me as I always been using a trigger throttle on my scooter. It's very easy to get used to when you ride on paths and roads and it's very comfortable and very ergonomical to ride with. These brakes are very interesting as yes, they're mechanical brakes, but they lock up quite easily. And I can say that it is a bit stressful sometimes when you lock them up as these are eight inch tires. And sometimes when you're in wet grass, you can start sliding left or right with the back of your scooter, which is quite a bit sketchy in my opinion. If you go into any gravel or any area where there might be broken glass, you will not get a puncture as there's nothing to puncture. There's no air inside the tires. Okay guys, let's start with the cons. Unfortunately, these are eight inch tires, so they're quite small and they are not good in terrain like grass. I was once riding on grass and my whole back just absolutely slipped underneath my feet. I nearly fell off the scooter. Luckily, I caught myself on my feet. Another thing I'd recommend is stay on the hard surface areas. 
One way the manufacturer have used that ability of using solid tyres is by creating adjustable suspension. This is amazing as I know some other scooters, if you have solid tyres on them, you can feel every single vibration in your handlebars. With this scooter, it has adjustable suspension so it smooths all the bumps out and it feels like a cloud. This scooter has extremely powerful motors considering their size. I did a range test, which I'll pop up right there, showing how far I went on one single charge. The motors are insane when going up hills as I had a couple hills on the range test and it flew up them. Near the deck area, we've got two indicators, one at the front on the front axle and one on the back. When I turn them on, they are nice and bright and very visible during the daytime and the nighttime. As you guys see, the weather has changed a little bit as we have to record in two days as the weather isn't on our side and currently there is a cyclone named Jasper coming towards the Sunshine Coast. So we kind of have to work with the weather now. Now I will show you guys how portable this battery is and what you can use it for in your daily life. The cool thing about this battery is that you can plug in your devices. So you can get this additional adapter, plug it into the battery, you screw a screw into the battery so it doesn't come off. Once it's plugged in, this Makuta logo on the adapter will light up showing that it's plugged in properly. While recording our video, our GoPro battery went low. So we can take out the GoPro battery, grab the charging hub, place in the battery for charging, close that, plug in, and now it's charging our batteries. Another example is that it's getting quite hot, but my fan has died. So we have a mini fan. We can plug that in, just like that. And now we have a nice fan when it's hot here on the Sunshine Coast. One more thing I'd like to add. My phone died. I'm trying to get somewhere. I don't know where I'm going. My GPS is not existent. So let's plug in my phone, just like so, grab the charging cable, plug it in, and now it's charging. And something we're looking for right now is a USB powered fridge to cool my drinks down. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something new about the Makuta 8 Plus and all the interesting features it has built into it. Please like and subscribe as this can help my channel evolve and create better footage and better videos. And as always, ride safe and keep exploring.